So welcome to the first video surveying different types of biomolecules. Biomolecules make up cells. So if you think about looking through a microscope to be able to see a cell, we're talking about zooming in even further to see the molecules that uh, combine together to make up those cells. And we're going to kind of break it up because there are four different types of biomolecules, carbohydrates, fats, also called lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. And I kind of want to make a video about each one in turn. So this video is just going to kind of introduce what I want you to know about each type, and then eventually just discuss carbohydrates in particular. So uh, because this is the first video, let's just kind of make sure we're clear about what you really want to take notes about, what, what you want to know for each class. Uh, eventually, I'd encourage you to make some kind of table that, that kind of um, has all this information in it. I want you to be able to tell me about the structure of each biomolecule. And, and what do I mean by structure? Um, when we answer structure questions, we're answering questions of, of what does it look like, what is it made of? Now, um, I'm also going to show, show you some very fancy um, uh, 3D kind of pictures of what these molecules look like. I don't need you to draw those. What I mean by structure is I want you to know the atoms, just the broad types of atoms that make up each of the four biomolecules. We'll see that each one of them have slight differences. And then we're going to see that in many cases uh, for three of the classes that there is sort of a, a repeating building block. Um, uh, made of a bunch of atoms. So we don't actually have to know the, the atomic structure of every single biomolecule because oftentimes a bunch of atoms make this repeating unit that we see um, combined together over and over again to make larger versions of these biomolecules. Um, in case that's a bit confusing, it's a bit like um, the analogy of a Lego. I would say that this kind of block right here would be the simplest building block of the Lego um, world because you can just simply take lots of those repeating units and combine them together to make much larger structures. So that's what I'm asking you to do. We're going to see that lots of these biomolecules have some version of this Lego block and then we'll see that, that, that those can be combined over and over again to make much larger versions of those biomolecules. So those have fancy terms. I don't need you to know those fancy terms, um, uh, but I'll just uh, write them here briefly in case you're interested. Um, I'm fine if you just want to refer to it as a simple building block or, or what is the building block of carbohydrates. Um, but the fancy word is monomer. Mono means one. And monomers can be combined to make polymers. Poly just means many. Um, like, for example, a polygon has many sides to it. Uh, and so you can combine monomers to make polymers and, and just again carbohydrates and, and proteins and nucleic acids have different monomers to them. So and then the other thing I want you to be able to tell me are some functions. Uh, structure, we've now described what they're made of and, and what, they're, uh, what combines together, but uh, now I want you to also describe what it actually does. What's the purpose of that molecule within the cell? Um, and maybe give me some example molecules as well. Okay, so let's start to investigate carbohydrates. Now again, I want to say right away, please do not write, uh, feel like you have to be able to draw that structure that I have over there. I'm just trying to show you a way of showing you all the atoms so that you can see that carbohydrates, for the most part, are made up of just carbon C, hydrogen H, and oxygen O. Um, we're going to see that lipids are made of the same atoms, so in order to differentiate them, we're going to see that carbohydrates largely have what I consider to be about an equal number of each atom. So um, this chemical formula here, if you were to count all of these, would be 6 carbons, C6, 12 hydrogens, H12, and 6 oxygens, O6. So that classic, it's about a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio of C to H to O. Okay, and we'll see that lipids are quite different from that eventually. Um, so instead of having to memorize this structure, what I often tell students is we can kind of take this inner hexagon here, um, this skeleton of the, of the glucose molecule, and we can just think of it as a green hexagon rather than drawing out all those atoms. Sometimes I just represent uh, simple carbohydrates as a green hexagon. So this would be the example glucose. Uh, there are other 
a very simple building block, sugars as well. Glucose is not the only one. Um, but if you want to keep things simple for my course, you're welcome to think of the, the building block as being glucose. A lot of textbooks will call them monosaccharides in general because there are other sugars. Um, some of them are even pentagons, not hexagons. But like I said, that's not really a big deal for my course. So you're welcome to call them glucose. Okay, um, what's the purpose of just glucose? Glucose has its own function. Glucose is largely there to, sh to serve as a short-term energy source for the cell. You can take the chemical bonds of glucose and kind of break them up. We're gonna investigate this in much more detail later in this unit through the process of cellular respiration. And by breaking those chemical bonds, you kind of turn the sugar down there into something, uh, into kind of broken up little bits, as we'll see. Um, and, and by doing that, you're releasing energy in this form that we're gonna call ATP later. Um, I haven't described ATP yet because that's a nucleic acid, as it turns out. But for our purposes, it, it, it pr uh, provides energy that, that the rest of the cell needs. So um, glucoses are really there to be cut up to release energy for the cell when needed. Um, the way I would have you remember that, if you need a little device to help you, is think about Gatorade. Um, or other energy drinks with lots of simple sugars in them. Um, those commercials uh, early for Gatorade promised that if you kind of drank them during your athletic event, they would provide you those immediate energy molecules, those simple sugars, those simple glucoses, um, or very close to glucose, needed to help you get through the rest of your athletic event. So kind of immediate energy needs. Okay. Now there are also larger carbohydrates that you can build. Again, look at this structure, don't write it down, don't memorize it. But what I hope you can see is it's really just a bunch of hexagons. There are those hexagons linked together by chemical bonds. So you can take very simple monomers and combine them together to build bigger polymers. This is actually an example of a polymer called cellulose. I'm also going to just go ahead and put chitin in there as well. Different organisms have different carbohydrates for the purposes of structural support, helping hold them together. Cellulose is in plants. Um, if you've ever crunched on crunchy celery before, you're crunching on the cellulose carbohydrate. Um, chitin is found in fungi and also found in bugs. If you've ever crunched a cockroach before by stepping on it, that crunch is sort of you're breaking up the chitin that, that helps protect it. Okay, um, back to energy, there are some other carbohydrates that kind of serve to store energy a little bit more in the medium term. This is actually a gorgeous picture of glycogen. Glycogen is found in animal cells. Um, ignore what's in the middle here. That's actually the protein that's making the glycogen. Um, and I know that it's, it's very hard to see here um, from this kind of zoomed out picture, um, but these are uh, each one of these little tiny things is a hexagon. So think of this glycogen as being thousands and thousands and thousands of glucoses linked together. And maybe the cell just wants to do that for a little bit more kind of long-term energy storage, what I call medium-term energy storage. Uh, starch is a little bit different, but serves the same purpose. Starch is just found in plants. Again, another uh, connection you might make athletes is maybe um, the night before a big athletic event, your coach tells you to eat a nice pasta dinner. Um, eat lots of starch, the energy storage of plants, and then overnight your body will turn that into glycogen because you're an animal. And then you'll have all of the storage energy you need to get through your big athletic event. Um, your body can take that glycogen and cut it up into glucoses, and then you can cut up those glucoses for um, immediate energy. So I'll come back to this in later videos once we finish introducing ATP and fats, but I just want you to see that there are lots of energy storing molecules in your cells, and just um, we've covered two of them in this particular video. Glucose, a little bit more of an immediate energy source, and glycogen and starch are a little bit more for long-term energy storage. And I'll cover the other two once we get there. So um, what we talked about, some brief structural things to think about with carbohydrates, the atoms that they're made of, CHO, about equal amounts of each. Glucose is the simplest building block that you can put together to make bigger carbohydrates or take it apart to get back to glucose. And that you can um, have lots of purposes for carbohydrates, but the kind of the major functions that we're gonna think about are for short-term energy. Uh, for the cell and also to help hold the cell together for certain organisms.